Hey guys, welcome to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what we call metric spaces, which are very important building blocks we use in any mathematical analysis course. And they can a metric space can be represented like so. And all this means is that we have a set x, any set we choose. So a set x and let me draw this in another color maybe um there okay and we also have this set coupled with what we call a metric so we have a metric which is a function d which takes two points from a set x so we denote this by x by x and maps it to one real number. Okay, so a function d, a metric d, is also called a distance function and can be written as a function of two points x and y in a set x. So for example, if we choose any two random points in a set x, the distance between them is determined by the metric d, which takes these two points, two elements, of a set x and maps them to a real number which we call the distance between the two points okay so what are the conditions a metric has to satisfy and that we can use to verify whether a function is indeed a metric well these conditions are split up into three sort of sub conditions and the first one being positive definiteness Okay, so this condition has again three sort of subcategories. Number one being that for a distance function or a metric dxy, we need that the distance be greater than or equal to zero. So the distance be non negative. What else do we need? We need that number two d, the distance between x and x, so the same point, must be equal to zero. Okay, that's uh, section number two. And finally, for positive definiteness, we need that if d, x, y is equal to zero, then we know that x must be equal to y. So on first glance, this third condition seems very similar to the second condition. In fact, they both are proving the same thing, but from two different directions. Um, and the purpose of this is to show that there's only one unique point where the distance between one point and another point is equal to zero, and that point is itself. So hopefully you got that. Um, but yeah, we'll get... we'll look at an example later today, but I just need to lay out the conditions first of all. And this is for every x and y we choose in a set x. Okay, condition number two, symmetry. This is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We require that the distance function between a point x and y should be equal to d of y x. So the distance between one point, the first uh, one point and another point should be equal to the distance between the second point and the first point. And uh, it's pretty simple. Again, we'll look at an example to make this more solid, but I just need to lay out the conditions. Actually, I can use this paper again. And condition number three is what we call the triangle inequality, which is a little bit more challenging, but again, not too complicated. So here we have that D, the distance between any two points, X and Z, must be less than equal to the distance between any points X and Y and any point Y and Z. So Y is some intermediary point between X and Z. Now. We can show this, probably the easiest way to show this is with a two-dimensional, in a two-dimensional space. So maybe we have x here, 
point Y here, point Z here. So the distance from X to Z in this space would just be the straight line, which is also the shortest distance between X and Z. And now these two lines, X to Y denotes the distance DXY, and DYZ is denoted by this distance right here, this length. And we know from math that one side of a triangle must always be less than or equal to the addition of the other two sides. So we know for a fact that this distance um, from x to z, which is also the shortest distance between these two points, must be less than or equal to a combination to get to z2. Okay, so... Now let's think of an example, which is pretty popular in, I mean, it's a metric we use in even basic math. Okay, so this metric is going to be defined on the real space. And the metric is absolute value x minus y. Okay, so let's picture a number line. We have a point x, we have a point y on the number line. How do we find the distance between the two of them? Well, all we need to do is get the positive difference between them, which is also the absolute value of x minus y. So this metric is used to calculate distance between any two points we use it in subtraction. So it's pretty, we use it quite a bit. Now let's actually prove that this satisfies all the conditions to be a metric. So if you remember um, this, this metric, let's call it D again. And it maps points in the real, because it maps, it takes two points from the real numbers and outputs, a distance function always outputs a real number, the distance. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure it satisfies the conditions. Number one, positive definiteness. We need that D of X, Y, which is X minus Y, should be greater than or equal to zero. And that's pretty obvious by the definition of absolute values. This is the case all of the time. So no more work required here. And this is subcondition one. Uh, subcondition two. I should really be using more colors, but I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. Okay. So this one requires that D of X, X. So X, X, which is equal to X minus X, because we're just subbing in X for Y into the uh, metric should be equal to zero. And indeed it is because X minus X will always give you zero and absolute value of zero is zero. So that's satisfied too. And number three, finally, if D of X, Y equal to zero, which means that if X minus Y is equal to zero, then we must have that X is equal to Y. But we know that if absolute value of X minus Y is equal to zero, this is the same thing as writing x minus y equal to zero. And so that's the same thing as if we add y to both sides, x equal to y. So positive definiteness is satisfied by this function, absolute value of x minus y. Now let's check symmetry. This one is a little bit more tricky, but not too tough. dxy equal to absolute value of x minus y. We can also write this as we can factor out a negative one, still inside the absolute value, not going out of it yet. And we can write y minus x, because negative one times y minus x will give you x minus y. And by properties of absolute value, when things are being multiplied inside the absolute value sign, we can separate them. So absolute value negative one times absolute value y minus x. And absolute value of negative one is just one. So this is equal to absolute value y minus x, which is equal to dyx. So we have shown symmetry. Now, finally, time for the triangle inequality. So dxz is equal to x minus z for any two points in the real numbers. And we can write this as x minus y plus y minus z. It seems kind of weird to write it like this, but we are allowed to. Negative y plus y will give you zero, so they are definitely equal. And uh, this will allow us to show the triangle inequality because we know by property of absolute values 
when things are being added underneath the absolute value sign, we can take, we can separate things. Uh, but we have to add a less than equal to sign plus y minus z. And this is equal to simply d of x, y plus d of y, z. And that's it. So we've shown that d of x, z is less than equal to d of x, y plus d of y, z. And if you didn't see, have never seen something like this before, that's fine because if we have an absolute value of let's say a plus b, we know that this is less than equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Um, why is this? Because you can think about it a bit, like maybe if we have even two positive numbers, then separating them won't make any difference. If we have one positive, one negative, then this will be smaller than the two separated and absolute. But yeah, uh, and then we just substitute x minus y equal to a and y minus z equal to b. But uh, yeah, you can do it straight from here to here if you wish. And that means that d of xy, which is equal to x minus y, constitutes a metric. And so we have a metric space on the real numbers, which is the set, and on the metric absolute value x minus y. And that is all. We're done by showing that it's a metric. And now you guys may be wondering, so now that we know what a metric is, how does this help us? How is this applicable later in our life? Because I know in mathematical analysis courses, it is kind of draining to learn all of this information, try to understand it when there's so much to learn and so much to remember. But the reason why we need metric spaces is because in the future, when we want to show whether a subset of any set X in a metric space is open or closed, we have to use the definition of distance, which is a metric. A metric is the definition of distance under a metric space, which is important. And also when we need to show maybe the cauchiness or the convergence of a sequence in a specific metric space, we also have to use the definition of distance in that metric space, which is the metric again. So guys, I hope this gave you a brief introduction to metric spaces and hopefully you got the hang of it. And uh, yeah, guys, see you later.